this is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. So today is actual part one of the Seeking His Face challenge. And so we want to look at, um, we want to look at the first part that I think is very necessary if we're really going to enjoy this challenge and engage in this challenge. And so I want to share with you a scripture and then I want to share with you a concept. Okay. And so I'm just going to share, share the scripture up front so that I can kind of reference the con the concept as we go through it. So the scripture is James 2.23. I'm reading from the New King James Version and it says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. And so I want to talk about this passage. Um, Abraham is the only one that we now reference in the word that's called the friend of God. And it's interesting because we don't, we we can see that Abraham leaves his home, with, which a lot of people in the in the Bible did. They left their home to follow him. We see the new the disciples in the New Testament have do that. There's a lot of people who are trusting God in that way. Joseph kind of has a similarity of it. It wasn't by choice. He was sold away, but he leaves his family and and he has to trust God. Moses does a very similar thing. Has to trust God. So then, what is it with Abraham? He becomes the father of a nation and he becomes a friend of God. And and there's something about this that is very interesting because when Abraham and God are developing their relationship, when that process is going forward, what seems to be happening here is that God and Abraham are relating on a different level. You see, this is before Abraham is the first first to receive a prom a promised covenant. He's like that's that's where it's beginning right and so what's happening is there's a relationship of trust being established between god and abraham that in that likens itself to friendship really it not likens itself it is friendship and so when the lord approached me with this challenge and just was like listen i want you to stop focusing on your suffering i want you to stop focusing on your deliverance i want you to stop focusing on your healing i want you to just seek my face just seek my face and stop all the rest of this stuff don't 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 do anything else don't try to see what tricks you have in your bag as a counselor don't try to see what whatever else is happening i just want the answer to all of my questions are to you are seek my face <laughs> That's the answer to every question you have. But Lord, when is this going to be over? Seek my face. Lord, how long is this going to last? Seek my face. Lord, but but are you sure that this is what you said and not this what you said? Seek my face. It was just like, listen, you don't know me. So really, we I could tell you anything at this point. And the, tr the trouble is, the reason why it's not working for you is because you already don't really know me enough to know that everything I've said to you is already true and everything I promised you is true, but you haven't been on enough on this journey with me, meaning you haven't been intimately connected with me to the level where you can just be like, okay, you can just be like, okay. And so I thought to myself, okay, how many of us then are on that journey in that level of intimacy? Like how much does it take to get to this place of really knowing him? And I came across the understanding of the Lord brought me to this place of Abraham and how Abraham, yeah, he left where he was. He left his family. This is true. But he also left without this understanding of who God was as far as provider protector and so on and so forth now the lord does do things for abraham we find he and sarah have the child you know all the things the miracles they happen but before that abraham is deciding to walk with them before anything miraculous has occurred abraham walks with god and there's something in the development of trust within that relationship without being able to say you are this and you are that because this is what you've done for me and this is what you've done and in, in other words without the proof god was just being himself and abraham was just receiving the self that god was being and so there's a purity in that relationship and so the question that i have for you today is how do you know him because when we get to the first part of this challenge, that's the first thing that has to kind of shift. If we can't admit that we really don't know him, 
then we can't really go on the challenge. Because if we think, well, no, I know him because he is, he is my Lord. He is my this. He is my that. He's my that. You're talking about roles. Um, you're talking about things that he does. Provision, protection, comfort. You're talking about those things. But those are not his identity. Those are the things that he does for us. They're the proof that he is who he says he is. But who does he say he is? Well, he says he's the I am, right? Meaning he's not changing. And he says that to Moses when he's about to go to the to deliver the children of Israel. He says to tell them that I am, that I'm not changing. I'm the same person I was. The problem is we haven't spent a lot of time figuring out who he was outside of what he does. And even the, the Israelites, that's how they did it, right? When God did something for him, they, they set up a memorial, they set up a, a, a offering and they said, okay, this is, this is on this day, God is Jehovah Nisi. He is the victory over us, right? When they got victory in a place, he's the victory. When this happens, he is this. And when this happens, he is this. And when this happens, he is this. And so they did these monuments of who God was. And that's great because that's a good way of saying, this is how God demonstrated his love toward me and this is how he verified that he is who he says he is and that he loves like he says he loves but but who is he right outside of the benefits that we get from him have we really sought the face of God or are we still seeking the hand and saying it's the face because if he's a healer that's his hand that he is a healer but that's his hand and if he's a director He's directing us. So that's, again, his hand. And if he's a lover, he's loving us. So again, that's his hand. But isn't there something deeper to God, right? If we had, and I mentioned this in the first video, but if if I had a relationship with my daughter in which all I praised her for was being a good daughter. Oh, you're a good daughter. You're a good daughter. Oh, you're a good daughter. You're a kind daughter. You're a gentle daughter. And everything had to do with the fact that she was a daughter. In some ways, I would be denying the fact that she exists outside of being my daughter, right? She is still who she is, right? Her personality, her character, all of the things about her that don't benefit me as her mother still exist. And I don't love her because she's my daughter, even though I love her, even and I won't be losing the fact that she's my daughter. I love her because she is who she is not because she's my daughter. And what about God though? We shift that paradigm to God and we say, oh, I love him because he first loved me. Mm -hmm. And that was a benefit. I love him because he's a provider. And that was a benefit. And we can say, oh, we worship you because of who you are. And then we go into this place. Who are you? You're a Jehovah Jireh, my provider. <laughs> you are Jehovah Nisi. You are, this is who you are. But is that who we are? he is or is that what he performs for us? And yeah, in, in the sense that he's his character, yes, that is who he is. But isn't there a pure place? And I believe that there has to be. And so I'm challenging you, part one, to just say, do you understand and know him? Even do you have a name for him that doesn't exist in his ability to do something for you? And if he was a human being, would he appreciate the way that you value him? Or would it be a problem? Because it'd all be based on performance. Do you know him? And if you know him, how do you know him? That's challenge part one. How do you know him? Seeking his face. I'm praying for you. I hope you're praying for me. Um, I hope you continue to watch this devotional series. It can be a little bit, I suppose, confusing, perplexing, and different because I don't know if I've heard anybody talk about this place. But it's a place I think we have to re have to visit or at least think about. Write a comment on the YouTube if, you, if you're with me. If you're not with me, say something because it's something we need to continue to dialogue about and have an engagement about. But it's something that's for real, very real to me. And I'm telling you this because God challenged me in this way. And I accepted the challenge because I